In this video, I'll be showing you how I put together this beautiful birthday themed charcuterie board. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below because it makes such a difference to this channel. As usual, I'll be listing all the timestamps down below so that you can skip forward to the information that's most important to you. So I made this charcuterie board for my mom's birthday and what I love is that it honestly works for pretty much any occasion. Whether you're celebrating a birthday or if it's to congratulate someone, all you have to do is change the words and it's instantly personalized and super special. This is honestly so easy to do and you can even tailor the cheeses and meats to the person that you're giving it to. Now a super helpful tip when you're working on a more decorative board like this is honestly just to sketch it out. So I really like to grab a pen and a paper and just sketch out my board, keep it messy, do it however you want. It pretty much just shows you exactly what you're going to create so you don't waste time in a supermarket over buying or just buying unnecessary things. It's basically like a game plan but for a charcuterie board. With that said, let's get to sketching and I'll show you how I put this board together. Alright guys, so we're gonna get started with this rectangular wooden board I picked up at Home Goods, as well as this Italian dry salami that I picked up at Trader Joe's. And now I'm gonna grab two slices of salami and I'm just going to fold those in half and then fold them again and just link those together. And then we're gonna continue to add more and more slices of salami, continuing to fold those and link them together, basically forming a long chain that's gonna go across the entire board. And we're gonna use this entire pack of salami for this first part, so just fold away until you have it all done. And here's another little close-up of how I put them together and then we're just going to add this to what we've already made. Now sometimes if your meats are cold, they will have a tendency to kind of unfold. So um, if you are able to do this at room temperature, that would be super helpful because it'll just stay put a little bit better. But if not, um, you can do it cold like I'm doing it now. And then every time it just kind of comes apart, you can just kind of fix it in those areas and then just keep on going. And as I add each slice of salami, I'm pretty much creating the placement that I wanted to have on the board. So you can do this diagonally, you can do this straight across the board, really however you want to do it. And then at the end here, I'm just going to kind of move it around with my hands until I give it the shape that I'm looking for. I kind of want it to look like a pretty wave because in the end, this is going to be kind of like a banner for our celebratory charcuterie board. So next I'm taking out a navel orange and I'm just going to go ahead and cut this in half and then cut it in half again right through this middle area. And once we've cut that right down the middle, now I'm just going to cut some slices as well. And this little area off to the left of the salami is actually where I'm going to layer my orange slices. And this is actually going to help keep my salami in place as we continue on with the rest of the board. And I'm going to set the rest of my orange slices to the side for later. Next up, we have our Mancheco that I purchased at Aldi. And for this, we are just going to slice it. So pretty easy and simple. When I do this, I always like to try my best to keep the thickness of each slice more or less consistent. Now, oftentimes it won't be perfect, but the more consistent you can keep it, the more consistent it's going to look overall when you put it on the board. And now that I have them cut, I'm just going to stack them side by side facing opposite directions. And I'm going to follow the same technique that I did with the oranges, which is just to use my cheese to pretty much keep my salami in place. So I'm going to place my mancheco right up here on the right. And then I will also put some more mancheco right here on the bottom. 
for our next cheese, I'm taking out this smoked Gouda cheese that I also got at Aldi, and I'm gonna cut the inside of this cheese out and leave just the border of it. Using a small knife was super helpful for this, and honestly, passing it about two times was perfect just to make sure that I had cut all the way through. One thing I really like to do is tailor my meats and cheeses to the group or the person I'm making it for, in this case my mom, since it's for her birthday, and she really loves a nice smoked cheese, so I really wanted to include this smoked Gouda that was super inexpensive at Aldi. So once you cut all the way around, then you'll just pop the inside right out, and it doesn't matter if it's not totally perfect, don't worry, you're really not going to be able to tell. So we're going to grab the inside and we're just going to cube all of it, and we're going to place that right inside that border, and as you fill it, you really won't be able to see any imperfections that you made when you were cutting. And just like when I was working on the Mancheco, I do like to cut my cubes more or less the same size as well to just keep that consistency going. That consistency really makes everything look seamless and flow really well in the end. I also really love the functionality of adding cubes to a charcuterie board. I think this is a really pretty way to incorporate cubes but still make it very nice and presentable. Cubes are just really easy to grab and pick at so I really love this. And now that that looks good, it's time to move on to our next cheese, which is going to be our brie. So I picked this up at Aldi as well, and I always like to cut on the smoother side since that's the side that's gonna show the most. And what we're gonna do is we are going to cut 16 wedges out of this brie by basically cutting it in half over and over again until we have 16 even wedges. And if you've ever watched any of my other charcuterie board videos, you know how much I absolutely love to include brie in every single board that I make. It's just always a fan favorite and it looks beautiful on every board. And once that's all cut, then we're just gonna layer our wedges into a circle formation. And it's okay if you have a little bit of a space right in the middle, that's totally fine because we're gonna go ahead and cover that in the end. The easiest way to do this is really just to lay each wedge on its side and slightly overlapping one another until you've basically formed a circle. And I'm just gonna open the circle up just a little more just to fit these last couple of wedges and we're good to go and it's time to move on to our creamy Toscano cheese. This is one of my favorite cheeses and it's a yummy cheese soaked in red wine. How delicious does that sound? And to lay it on the board, we're just going to cut nice and even slices so that we can layer the slices in a triangle. Now when you are cutting your slices, I do recommend trying to be as careful as possible. I did kind of use both of my fingers to hold the cheese on both sides just because the cheese does have some of these small little holes in it. So I just used my fingers to allow me to keep the cheese together so that I could properly slice it. And I have to say this cheese is super decadent and it offers such a unique color to the board which I feel like you can really appreciate when you style it like this on the board because we get to see the inside of the cheese as well as that beautiful outside purple color. And here I'm just layering each slice in that same triangle shape that the cheese originally came in. Next up, I have this delicious truffle honey, and this is such a game changer. It pairs so well with just about everything, but specifically the brie. It's such a nice combination. And then I'm also going to add this ramekin here so that we can add our olives later. And now I'm going to add some fresh green grapes, and when I place them, I always like to make sure that the stem is as least visible as possible. So oftentimes, I'll try to make sure that the stem is on the bottom. And now for this super yummy blueberry vanilla goat cheese. And guys, people absolutely love this cheese. Even the non-goat cheese lovers love it as well. And it truly adds just a beautiful color and just beautiful texture to the board overall. So from here, I'm gonna slice the entire log. And I do kind of tend to make them a little bit thick because if you cut it too thin, it does tend to fall apart. And then I'm just gonna layer them out right above the salami. And that looks about good, so I'm going to jump right back in with my orange slices, placing them right here in this corner. And I really want to add some more fun and vibrant fruit to this board, so here I have a kiwi that I'm just going to slice. And I'm going to place this right at the top of my board. I really like to use fruit near the edges to help me keep all the smaller things like the nuts in place on the board. And now that I've layered a couple of slices, I'm going to set the rest aside for now and move on to this delicious garlic and herb borzen cheese. This stuff is so good and it's more of like a spread. It honestly pairs with pretty much any cracker and is so easy. All you have to do is open it up and plop it on the board. And with this last cheese, we're officially good on cheese. So I'm going to add some of this prosciutto from Trader Joe's and we're going to make some prosciutto ribbons. So to do this, I'm going to grab a slice and fold it in half. And then I'm going to fold it back and forth and pinch the bottom so it kind of looks like a fan. And that's pretty much it. It's such a beautiful and easy way to add prosciutto to a charcuterie board. And once again, it's super functional and super easy for guests to pick the meat off the board, which I absolutely love.
and I'm gonna continue to follow the same process with each piece of prosciutto until the entire pack is all done. I'm placing three right next to this ramekin and I'm gonna place a little bit more right here where the goat cheese is and finishing off next to the brie. And here I'm gonna drop a couple more grapes since it'll stand out really well in this area. And now I'm taking out this bite-sized dry salami I picked up at Aldi. And honestly, these little salamis pack a punch. They are a little spicy, which adds a nice variety to the board, especially for those who really like a spicy meat. And they are also so easy to place on the board because they're already cut for you. So I'm just gonna layer them in a couple areas on the board. And before I finish with them, I'm just gonna put some of these Ule Franz crackers on this board as well. I'm gonna place them right under the salami and then sneak them right here next to the brie. And I'm gonna to try to face these a little bit more flat and layered instead of upright. And that looks about right. So I'm gonna go in with the bite-sized salami one more time right here next to this cheese. And that looks perfect. So now I'm gonna to top my brie off with some fresh blackberries. And then I'm also gonna to toss on a couple of fresh raspberries as well to just add to all the beautiful colors on this board. And now I'm gonna add just a couple more blackberries down here at the bottom of the board. And then it's time to move on to our dried fruits, which in this case, I'll be using some dried apricots that I purchased from Aldi. Now I absolutely love these. They add such a vibrant color to the board and they are always so popular. And next up, we'll be adding these beautiful pink roses to the board. So the first thing we're gonna do is cut the stem off as much as possible, and then I'm gonna pull out any petals that don't look up to par. Flowers add such a beautiful touch to a charcuterie board, especially when it's a celebratory board like this one. And I'm gonna try to place a couple roses in areas where they're gonna stand out the most. So I'm gonna put the first one here right next to the oranges where it'll stand out beautifully. And then I'm gonna put another one right here on the bottom. And then to complete this area, I'm gonna add some kiwi right here. And I think the combination of the green and the pink and the orange is just gonna look so awesome. And yes, I absolutely love it. I'm just gonna tuck the edge of this orange right over this kiwi. And I'm gonna add some more blackberries. I'm gonna add some right above the spores and cheese and then right here next to our Gouda. And that's perfect. And for our last rose, I'll place it right under this kiwi. And next up, I have these adorable assorted macaroons. I've been so excited to use these. I love macaroons because it gives such a celebratory birthday vibe to a board. I honestly think it's such a cute thing to add to a board always, but even more so because this is birthday themed. So I'm just gonna toss these in a couple different areas on the board, just taking into account the colors and where they're gonna pop the most because that's the goal we want them to show and really add to this board. And I'm not gonna hold back, I'm using this entire pack, guys. It only cost me $4.59 at Aldi, which is incredible, because you get a whole 12 macaroons. I would say Walmart is probably the only cheaper place that I've found macaroons, so this was a really good buy, especially in 2022. <laughs> Next up, we're gonna be adding some of these cashews. I love these cashews because they're salt and pepper and they're just honestly have a nice bite to them. They're delicious and add that little bit of saltiness that you need sometimes. And I'm just gonna use these to fill some of the empty areas. And next, one of my other favorite things to add on charcuterie board are strawberries. So we're just gonna cut these in half and we're gonna utilize the greens and the open strawberry to really add a lot of texture and just pop of color to the board as well. So as you can see, I'm cutting them in half and I'm really just placing them wherever it's gonna complement the area or just break up some of the colors that we have. These are perfect. They look super fresh and yummy. Overall, I would definitely say that this is my favorite way to cut strawberries to place them on a charcuterie board. And now to really give this a birthday feel, I'm gonna use this provolone cheese and these cookie cutters and we are actually going to write happy birthday mom with this. So I lined up all the letters that I'm gonna be using for this, and I'm just gonna grab one of the letters to stamp into the cheese. And then the cookie cutters also came with these sticks that were super helpful because it helps to just kind of push the cheese right out. And that's it, it is seriously that simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this again with all the rest of the letters until I have a full happy birthday mom. And I also did get these cookie cutters off Amazon, so I'll definitely make sure to list that link down below. 
And I would definitely say that the secret to this is really to not use any super decadent cheese. Using a simple sliced cheese like this is the easiest way to do this. Um, something nice and cheap. I wouldn't go as cheap as a American cheese because it's a little too flimsy. So something like a provolone like this or a cheddar or even a Munster cheese is perfect. And now I'm just going to place all the letters on my salami and I would definitely recommend trying to leave an even amount of space in between each letter and as well as in between each word. And guys, if we can take a second to just appreciate how beautiful this board looks, honestly, it is such a great way to personalize a board and just make someone feel loved. You can truly do this for any occasion, whether you want to switch it up for a holiday or congratulate someone. The ideas are endless because you can write whatever you want. And for the finishing touches of this board, we'll be adding these Spanish manzanilla olives as well as this cheese spreader and honey dipper I picked up off Amazon. And as usual, I'll be listing all the links down below for you. And there you have it, guys. A beautiful personalized charcuterie board. I have to say, guys, I am so proud of this one. It is just so special. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. I truly hope this video was incredibly useful and helpful to you and it just allows you to make someone feel super special in your life. As usual, don't hesitate to comment down below. I love getting all of your questions and truly love to be able to connect with you guys. So with that said, that's all for this video. So I will see you in the next one. Bye!